All right. So let's talk about a pump start. These two circ pumps have big MOVs, giant butterfly valves on the end. Before you start the circ pump, you need to know that you've got water in the entire system. Because if you took this water out and slammed it through that 12 foot giant freaking pipe right into that tube sheet, then I'm sure it would break things. I'm sure that we would have a contaminated condenser and a whole, whole bunch of work to do and extend an outage because you're starting this pump right at the end of the outage. So how do we do that? How do we make sure the system is full? Build out on part four. All right, so. Is that the vacuum pump strainers? Yes, right next to the vacuum pump strainers. Uh, it, I think it's on the inlet side, but I'm not 100% sure. We got a little double valve situation going on there. No. And then upstream of that, on the second floor over the hand railing, you got another valve. So these valves, you will not be able to open them all the way because you'll get your second service water pump to start. So you kind of have to have the control room operator watching the, the pressure. So you're going to open this valve some and it's going to be kind of loud. And then the control room operator is watching the pressure. And then the service water restart valve is going to pinch back and it's going to drive that pressure back up. So for a while that pressure is going to maintain as you put more and more into the, the circuit water header. And as you get that valve open more and more, it quiets off some. Because you're not, you're not fighting it as much, right? You're letting it do what it wants to do. And then uh, eventually that the recirc at the surface water pumps all the way shut. You got all you can get out of the pump. And then that pressure is going to start dropping and dropping. And you get down to 100 pounds, and then the uh, control room operator say, that's it, that's all we can get. Another thing that goes on during all this is the, the makeup water. You, you, before you start adding water here, you need to start putting water in the surface water tanks. And uh, there is a good chance you'll need to put the third multimedia filter in purpose, uh, in service, so that you're putting three times 650 instead of just the the 1300 we're normally doing. 1950, eh? a little slow on that. <laughs> All right, so then it'll be about four hours. And so at first, the only indication you got is you got a shit ton of flow noise here. And then that's got to backfill to those MOVs. And it probably doesn't take a whole lot of water there because it's all low. There's nowhere for it to go. And then it's got to push through the condensers and gradually fill these water boxes up. And then it gets to the outlet and it dumps down and then it goes all the way back to the coolant power fans. On top of these water boxes at each corner, there's a little float trap valve. So that is letting the air out as you push the water in. And eventually the water gets up to them and then it, it cuts off. Or it's supposed to, or they mostly cut off. And sometimes you gotta manually isolate them afterwards. Uh, after you've been doing this for an hour or two hours, you can go and you can feel uh, air coming out of them. And in that last 30 minutes, you can hear that air whistling the hell out of them. And then finally they shut off. And so that, there are level switches right next to those bits on the uh, inlet and outlet water boxes, not on the intermediate. So you've got a vent and you've got a level switch. So the computer wants to see all four of these level switches in before it tells you, okay, I know it's safe to start this pump. The computer wants to see all four of the inlet and outlet main, uh, main valves, those 12-foot giant suckers. 
wants to see them show open before it lets it start. And then somebody will be standing out there at the pumps. On their way, they're going to confirm that they see water coming down through the sprinkler heads. That's your final indication that everything's full. There won't be a whole, well, it won't be water running through it like the, you know, 20,000 gallons a minute or whatever you have circling through this normally. It's going to be in the, you know, 1,000 to 1,500 gallons a minute. So it's going to be like a half, a quarter. It's going to be way less than what you're used to seeing. So then this person calls control room, says, Danny Rhodes, I'm standing by the start pump, ready for a start. And he says, copy, you're ready for a start, stand by. And then he checks to make sure he's got all the permits. And he says, here comes your start. And then this discharge valve starts coming open. And then when it gets, shows 10% and moving in the open direction, then the motor kicks on and then the water starts going and then it goes the rest of the way open. And hopefully that's it. Hopefully it's not that bad. If we're in an outage and we're going to be running like that for a while, then they're going to say, oh, well, we only need one short pump. We don't need to waste the electricity on the other one. So let's turn off the lights when we walk out of the bathroom, guys. So in that line of thinking, normally you have like 28 pounds on this header here. If you don't, if you only have one pump, then you only have like 15 pounds on this header and that pump kind of, the vibrations get higher. So to stop that from happening, we go to these two outlet valves and we choke them back to 40%. And then that, that drives that pressure back up. So then a day later, they want to start the next, the other pump back up. So this time we got to stage somebody out there by these valves. Gotta take the valves open so that he see, so that the control room sees it and has permit to start his pump again. And then you say you're standing by for start, and he hits start, and the logic sees that start sequence and goes, hey, I know this is going to shake this thing. I'm going to move up the trip set point on this other pump because it's not that there's something wrong with the pump, it's that the other pump start. You're gonna watch that MOV start coming open, and MOV's gonna get to 10%, the pump's gonna start, and then the MOV's gonna come the rest of the way open, and then once that MOV's the rest of the way open, then somebody, well, no, you don't have to, that's already done, sorry. It only has me done once. No, not the one that by the kind of storage tank, the ones on the Yes, it's the one in the, these, Four jet valves are in the switch yard. And so yeah, these are these two are the ones closest to the compensate storage tank. Uh, tricks. On these MOVs, there is a local remote off switch, and then there's another switch on the back that says like local in hand or main or something like that. You need to make sure both of those are in the uh, remote. Anything else? All right, that's starting the circuit pump.